Hi, welcome to Grid Down Preparedness. My name is Wade, and we're doing some testing on the Pecron E3600 LFP. Now, Pecron asked me to do this test, and I did the test earlier, but I missed a step. I did the test previously with the data cable connected. Uh, they asked to do the test without the data cable connected. Uh, in the previous test, which I did upload the video um, of me doing that test, so this will end up being the part two of that video, but when I powered this unit on, the same time with that one, with the 240 volt hub connected without the data cable, the inverter started up. Uh, when I did the, the previous test, not even 30 minutes ago, uh, this was still showing an inverter short circuit. So I'm going to capture it on video, what I'm doing here right now. Uh, I'm going to get the test metrics that they asked for. So please take a moment, like and subscribe uh, if you haven't done so already. And please share this video with your friends. I also do have a section where you can join my channel. If you'd like to support this channel and see it grow to where we can afford to uh, purchase larger and bigger power stations to test as well as other brand of power stations, uh, please, if you feel so inclined, uh, go ahead and check out the join section and we will have uh, special member only videos where you get inside reviews when we start getting new power stations. You'll be the first ones to uh, get to see those videos. Anyway, let's get through the test. So one of the first test items they wanted me to do was unplug the network cable. That has been done. Uh, connect to 240 voltage hub, uh, power the units on, and check uh, the voltages between uh, line one and line two, and take a photo of whatever error message is present. Um, and record what the voltages are between line one and line two. So right now I've got the, the, the power stations turned on, they're powered up, they're both at 120 volt, 60 hertz uh, mode. So first thing I'm going to do is this uses the original power station, this had an inverter replacement on it, as well as a BMS board. Uh, we are going to go here and we are going to take a test and see what our voltage is. And our voltage is 119.7 on this inverter. We're going to go to this other inverter and we're going to test the voltage here. And the voltage here is 119.1. Um, now, you may have just heard this started beeping. It wasn't beeping when we turned on and I had a green light in spite of not having the data cable connected. Still no error messages on either power station. So I'm going to come around on the back side here, so I'm not turning my back to the camera again, and I'm going to test the line voltages. So this is line one, line two, and we're going to go across here, and let's see what we have. So here... I have 145, uh, voltage is drifting, 141, 142, 140, um, I'm not sure that I have a good connection. The voltage is drifting around here. Um, voltage here, so line to neutral is 119, line to neutral is 119, we'll go line to ground, 58.1 uh, is line to ground. And then the other line to ground, other line to ground, let's see. So this line to ground, come on, connect. Uh, 0.1 volts, let me recheck this one. Line to ground, 58. That is volts, not millivolts. Um, I don't know which one of these goes to this unit, but let's go back across the neutrals again. And now we're down to 98 volts. Volts is dropping uh, between line one and line two. I suspect that's because the power stations are out of sync, which is why this is beeping. Um, so we're going to leave these actually connected in here. And this is going to go down. So what I'm going to do now um, is turn both units off simultaneously 
and then we're going to restart them and see if we get any errors and see if the voltages match. Um, the voltage is drifting, that's the only reason I'm recording this for Pecron and I haven't written it down yet. Alright, so both power stations going off. Alright, both power stations are confirmed off. I have no voltage on the multimeter. Nothing's beeping, so we're off. We're going to come back on again on AC power, starting simultaneously. Click and click. I've heard the clicks, and now our voltage, right now we're sitting at 115.4, jumping around, and this unit's beeping again. And just to confirm, I'm going to try something here. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I'm going to go from line one and line two through the meter. It could blow my meter up. It shouldn't, though, but we're going to check. And, of course, I have nothing going through the, nothing going through the meter there. Um, voltage on this unit is 119.2. Voltage on this unit, 119.7. Uh, this is still beeping. We're going to go across. And right now it's saying 112. Uh, 1.9 to ground. And then this has 98 volts to ground on that other line. Uh, I have 61 volts, it looks like neutral to ground, and then between the two units, uh, it's sitting at 110 and dropping. So I don't know if that's because we don't have the uh, data cable connected, so what I'm going to do uh, is depart from what they asked me to test because this unit no longer has the uh, inverter fault, I'm going to turn both the units off. All right, we got clicks out of both of them. Going to unplug this unit, unplug this unit, and then I'm going to turn them on one at a time. Heard a click out of that one. Turn this unit on. I got a click out of this one. Okay, so both units are on. I'm going to do a voltage test again with nothing connected. Trying to be comprehensive in this test. So please bear with me. All right. Come on. All right, I got 119 volts. And change on this one, this unit here. 119.7. So this is 119.4, that's 119.7. Okay, we're going to turn this unit off, we're going to turn this unit off, we're going to get the networking cable, and we're going to connect the networking cable to the units here. Networking cable's connected, that power cord's in, this power cord's in. And now that networking cable should allow this to phase correctly and give me uh, roughly 240 volts. So we're going to turn both units on at the same time. Heard click simultaneously. And no error message. Good clicks. And let's see if we get a status light of green. And the green status light, I don't know if it comes through in the camera, but the green status light is on. So now with that cable on, we are going to, and that was this beeping, we're going to go across from line 1 to line 2 and check our voltage. 239.0. Um, to neutral, 119. 
to neutral, 119. And neutral to ground, I have 34.9. Line one to ground, I have 84.0. Line two to ground, I have 2.9 volts. So while this is on, I'm also going to check the connections on, on here. So we're going to go in the hot. So hot to neutral, 119.2. Hot to ground, 0 0.71. Going to go to this one. So line to neutral is 119.7, line to ground is 0.1. So the, the hypothesis is that there may be an issue uh, in this combiner box here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the testing data. Uh, I'm going to email Pecron back and tell him that this unit has cleared up, but we're actually going to go here to the alarm record and we're going to scroll down to today. So let's take a walk over here and get, get close in here. And we could see all of the inverter output short circuit alarms uh, going back to I believe November, um, November 29. So here we had overload of inverter output. And then no output in series. This is when it was unplugged. Overload of inverter output, um, communication abnormality. That was uh, earlier. I'm sorry, the camera's moving. So, uh, first major alarm we had seems to be on the 29th. And I know what the overload of inverter output was. That was when a well, a well pump and my water heater started simultaneously. Um, we'll go over to this unit. I apologize for my camera. Um, skills here. We're going to go into the alarm record on this one and uh, you can see the um, abnormal phase inline connection and that was 11.2 and 11.14 um, has some abnormal phase connections. So instead of taking the photos, I think I'm going to send uh, this video here directly to uh, Pecoron as well as have it posted on my YouTube channel. So I will upload the first video I did. Uh, I didn't do the, the same test procedure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, let's see, exit simple mode. I'm, I'm going to leave these on for a little while. I'm going to upload the video. Uh, I'm just going to come back and see. As you can see, this one's at 49%. That one's at 99%. I'm not going to try to power anything with it. I'm just going to let it kind of run and see if we have another error message. Um, it's kind of weird that it reset and uh, stopped its um, inverter short circuit. So this is, this is why we test. Um, it may have not actually been a failure, and like I, I wanted to point out, right here is a, it looks to be um, some sort of circuit breaker. Let me come to this, this side over here, it's easier to see. So, it looks like this is um, overcurrent protection, so that's some sort of breaker. I've never seen that pop on these units. Uh, I, I'm not sure if these output could output 30 amps as well. 
Uh, there's no breaker here and no breaker here. Um, and I think that's a feature that I would kind of like to see on these units. So if you did have some sort of phase imbalance, uh, it would pop the breaker. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, this will be the part two of the first video I'll up upload. Thanks for watching.